The first of my extra tips for playing against the storm is about the upgrades you should invest in as you start to level up the smoldering city. Obsidian Archive level 1 is unavoidable and unlocking deeds lets you gain extra experience to level up the smoldering city faster. The next two upgrades are similarly unavoidable and also very useful. But where the choices start to matter is at the next lineup of upgrades. Gaining more embarkation points is a big bonus with Pioneer's Gate level 1 and it lets you bring several resources to each new settlement. Being able to control consumption is a must-have because it lets you save up raw foods you want to craft into complex food which is what your settlers prefer to eat and gain a resolve boost from. For more information on resolve boosting do use the link up here or my Against the Storm full playlist below in the description. Next monastery upgrade is also very helpful as having more options when choosing cornerstones lets you have a higher chance to get something useful. Since the cornerstone pool is so large, it can happen even several times during one settlement build that you get nothing useful to choose from. The one upgrade on this line you can skip is First Dawn Headquarters level 1, because getting more settlers as an embarkation bonus is not as useful as getting resources. This way you just have more mouths to feed on top of already low starting resources. You can go back to this upgrade once you have 5 embarkation points and you can bring a lot of food when starting a new settlement. But at this starting point during the overall playthrough it would be a waste of resources. Moving up to the next upgrade line Obsidian Archive level 4 lets you choose from more blueprints. Which same as cornerstone choices can be problematic when you don't get anything you want or are able to use at that point. So having an extra choice each time is very useful to help you actually pick a new building blueprint that will benefit your current settlement build. Brass Forge level 1 upgrade is another must as upgrading your hub to the neighborhood level gives you another bonus on top of the first and it is rather cheap to do so in every settlement. The required resources and construction materials can always be obtained and crafted while the bonus is 10% to global production speed. The other two upgrades are skippable and Dim Square level 1 especially as it unlocks trade routes, part of gameplay which currently requires large investments of resources and time which are highly situational for low rewards. On the next Smoldering City upgrade level your first choices need to be Pioneer's Gate level 2 for the reason I have already explained and the Monastery of the Vigilant Flame level 3 which lets you reroll cornerstone choices. This means at least once you won't have to choose a useless cornerstone if of the 3 choices none are good for your current settlement. Brass Forge level 2 is honestly an expensive and not a very useful upgrade as 5 planks are so easy to craft in any new settlement. Yes, you can come back to this and get it so you can advance the whole horizontal line of the Brass Forge upgrade chain, getting some better bonuses, but definitely later on as you have better uses for your hard to come by resources. Vanguard Spire level 1 is the first upgrade to let you get a blueprint of a species specific home, this one being for humans. If you do get this upgrade, you will unlock human homes in every settlement moving forward as a default building option. It isn't a cheap upgrade and for me personally it is not one I saw much need for in the easier difficulty levels and beginning of your playthrough. But if you want to play on higher difficulty levels I would definitely advise taking this upgrade. I will make an entire video dedicated to upgrades of the smoldering city but I am waiting for developers to stop adding and changing the upgrades before I do so. I will leave a link here for that video and we should move on to my next tip. This one might not be very exciting but as the saying goes the devil is in the details. I personally only learned this after many hours of playing and reading some of the comments on my videos. In the gameplay options menu there are several settings that can help you reduce the amount of things you have to do in every new settlement. Like for example the default woodcutters camp mode options. Setting this to only mark trees and avoid glades makes it possible to manually choose 
where every woodcutter in every settlement will cut trees and not worry about any glades being opened if you have marked one tree too many. Many other checkboxes for gameplay options are in the right setting for normal play, but a few I would suggest turning off are the ones for hard fuel type. You should leave only the one for wood checked and uncheck the ones for coal, sea meadow and oil as those are far more precious and expensive resources than wood. This way you do not have to keep doing this manually for every new settlement. If you play at high speed, I would suggest checking the option for auto pause to be enabled on a few events, like when you discover a dangerous or forbidden glade as the events in those are time sensitive and you can end up getting hit by a nasty event if you speed past the time you have discovered a glade containing that dangerous event and you didn't do anything about it. Same thing applies to traders as their time in your settlement is short and at high speed they will leave in just a few seconds, meaning you would miss the opportunity to trade. Now for some more tips from your fellow players, left as comments on my previous such video. Feel free to leave your own tips to help other players and I will include these tips in my future videos. First such tip is from Mindstar2000 and it's about the positioning of resource collection buildings. Naturally, you want to place these right next to resource nodes so your settlers don't take long to get to a deposit and come back to the building with what they have collected. But an important detail is which side of the building you turn to the resource node. Because settlers who work there are going to make many more trips between the building and the node than between the building and the storage where they drop off several items at once. Therefore, you want to turn every resource collection building and its drop-off point in the direction of the resource node. Sure, sometimes this won't be possible or you wanted to have the building on a fast road type, but do consider the benefits. Next tip comes from Paul R and it's about using the Queen's Impatience mechanic, that red bar on the bottom of the screen, to reduce hostility of the forest. The idea is that by calling in a trader to arrive quicker, you increase the queen's impatience, which in turn becomes a positive modifier when it comes to hostility from the forest. It also goes well with one of the cornerstones where you get more global resolve the higher the queen's impatience gets. I explained this and the forest hostility mechanic in much more detail in my video on how to start a new game in Against the Storm linked up here and in the playlist you can find in the description below. When it comes to getting those rare resources for upgrading the smoldering city, I need to explain the question marks on the world map. These mark locations of bonuses which you can only benefit from once you successfully finish a settlement next to them. But to even know what they are, you have to banish the fog from them by having a settlement finished near them. This means that when you start a new cycle, it is best you pick a target hex around which you can discover as many question marks as the time and settlement building allows you. Then when you discover them, you can choose to construct a new settlement very near them and in the top corner of the screen you can see the exact benefit to your overall progress. You can also see more info about it in the summary tab of the caravan setup options. Another very important tip is about the high usefulness of sea meadow. This is a resource you can pick up from nodes on the map in almost any map biome playthrough. Its most valuable use is in speeding up investigations and events in glades. Once you stockpile a respectable quantity of it and open up a totally new dangerous or forbidden glade, some of which might have several events, it has the potential to let you finish these events twice as fast, reducing the amount of time you suffer from negative effects those events will create once they are worked on. In this example, I have discovered the fisherman outpost in a forbidden glade and it can deal devastating damage to my settlement if it is not cleared. But to do so takes time and resources and while it is worked on, it makes my food disappear right from my storage at an alarming rate. On top of that, the second effect directly reduces global resolve if my woodcutters keep working, so I have to stop them for the moment. But as the whole economy is highly dependent on wood, this is not an ideal solution. So to keep the loss of food and wood to a minimum, I have to sacrifice sea marrow at the ancient heart. To get the most out of it, 
I will also finish all the other events in this glade at the same time as they too will benefit from the sea meadow sacrifice speeding up their event resolution. One more tip is to add roads to speed up the settlers as they carry the resources necessary to finish these events from the storage to their locations. As we take a look at the timelines in each of these events, we can see just how fast they will be cleared now because of the effect of sacrificing sea meadow. This has reduced the time my woodcutters were not working and the amount of food I lost from my storage. For more such tips, use the cards on the screen. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.